Hello Tangerinis from the beautiful tropical paradise of Isla Holvash. We are here on this island in Mexico and today we're going to be telling you what not to do so that you have a better time on your vacation, you don't get scammed, and you don't spend more money than you have to. First thing not to do is forget to plan your transportation to the island. It's a little more complicated than you might expect. If you're like most people, you're going to be flying into the Cancun International Airport, but you're going to have to do a little bit more to get to Isla Holbosch from there. So your options are taking a cab, a bus, or a shuttle from Cancun to Chiquila, and then taking a ferry or a boat from there to the island. You also have the option to fly, although that's the most expensive option. So how long will it actually take to get to Holbosch? Well, taking into consideration the time you'll need for customs, getting and loading your luggage several times, buying tickets, and waiting around a little bit, it will be about three hours to get from the airport to the town of Chiquila. From there, you'll be taking a ferry to the island, and that experience will be around 45 to 60 minutes. Finally, once you arrive on the island, you'll likely want to hail a golf cart taxi to take you and your luggage to your rental, which will be another 30 minutes or so. In total, you're looking at four to five hours of traveling to arrive in paradise. Another thing you shouldn't do here at Isla Holbosch is expect to be a digital nomad because the Wi-Fi is notoriously bad, the power goes out frequently, and even the cell tower has been out for the last day and a half. So if you're coming to Isla Holbosch, just expect to disconnect and don't expect to be online much. Okay, we're back here in the room again, cooling off, and I had just come inside. I was sitting out on the patio and the AC went off and I was like, oh my gosh, Jordan, thank you so much. I was freezing in here because it's a pretty powerful little AC. And then it was like, wait, no, I didn't, I didn't turn it off, what? Okay. So um, as it happens, the power went out again. This for the is second time. For the second time about, in four days, I believe. And about a few minutes ago, the about a few minutes ago. <laughs> and the cell towers also went down. No service, no power. This is the island life, you guys. <laughs> Something else you shouldn't do is skip sunscreen because the UV index is really high here and you're gonna burn very, very quickly. How do we get sunburned today? Can't we take our own advice? I know, uh, but, I'm, I'm like beating myself up. Like seriously, how many times can we say the UV index is high, I put sunscreen on? Like seriously, liberally apply it all the time. Well, but then we <laughs> were like, we were. It was, it was constant, that's, like we were putting sunscreen thing, on like crazy. Th this should be a testament to the fact that it's so easy to get sunburn in this region because the UV index, the sun, is so much stronger. I think we were applying it at least every hour and it was SPF 50. Yeah, at least. So, Whew, watch out. <laughs> Next thing not to do is forget to pack bug spray. Seriously, the strongest stuff you can find, whatever works for you, for me it's off deep woods because that has the most amount of DEET. I realize that's not good for you, but it's the only thing that's going to prevent me from getting eaten alive by the mosquitoes and the noceums, and I really don't want dengue. That's a very real concern in this area. <laughs> but here on Holbosch, the mosquitoes and bugs are especially bad, even by comparison to other places in this region. Where so they are bad already. Where they're already bad. Uh, they are particularly bad at sunset though. Oh, and speaking of the sunset, something else not to do is miss seeing a sunset while you're here on Isla Holbosch. So often people will recommend that you go to Punta Cocos to see it, and that's on the western point of the island. However, you can see the sunset on basically the whole main beach of Isla Holbosch that's on the northern side. You don't have to go to Punta Cocos, although that is the most panoramic view of it. Something else you shouldn't do at Holbosch is come in the wrong time of year. We're here in mid-September, and let me tell you, this is the wrong time. This is still in the heat of summer when it's the most hot and the most humid and even the UV index, meaning the strength of the sun, mm -hmm. is the strongest in this time of year too. This time of year does have its benefits. It's going to be a little bit cheaper for hotels. There's not going to be as many people. But what has coming when it's this hot and humid meant for us? Well, we'll go out to breakfast and then by the time we're done with breakfast, we're drenched in sweat and so hot that we have to go back to our hotel and take a shower and cool off in the AC for a while before we can go do something else. Then we go to lunch and the same thing happens. We come back, we take a shower, or jump in the pool. And you know the crazy part too is that we'll feel like we've almost done nothing in the day, but we're exhausted. Uh -huh. Just because the sun and the heat, it just really takes it out of you. So in our opinion, the mistake you'd be making would be coming during this hot time of year, which is approximately uh, March, April-ish to the end of September, and it kind of starts cooling down in October. Yeah, best time of year, probably <laughs> November to April. Yeah, some, something like that. 
it, even though you're gonna be fighting the crowds a little bit more and you're gonna be paying more, I think it'd be worth it. I think we would actually, we would be enjoying and liking Holbosch way more if the weather was nicer. A very, very important note when it comes to booking the right time of year. We forgot this at the time because we've already seen the whale sharks, but in the middle of summer is the prime time, the time, the only time during the year where you can see the whale sharks. And also it's the prime time to see bioluminescence. So that's something you're gonna wanna consider as well. For us though, the weather is a huge factor and when you're hot and, and it feels miserable outside, that doesn't make for as desirable of a time so definitely do consider and weigh all of these factors before booking. That brings us to our next point is don't get a hotel or a place to stay without air conditioning. You're going to want a place to go back and cool off. Uh -huh. That's been our saving grace every time uh -huh. we're feeling like we're about to die out here because <laughs> it's just a little bit too much. What's the next thing not to do Jordan? Don't double tip everywhere you go because Many of the restaurants here include a suggested tip on the bill. Then if you pay with cash, they'll return your change minus the suggested tip or having the suggested tip already taken out of the bill. So I didn't say exactly what I meant in the original clip, but basically what we're getting at here is that when they put a suggested tip on there, you give them a big bill and they return your change with that tip already taken out. What's happening in this in these circumstances are that they're not returning the original receipt so that you know what type of change you should have gotten and what was or was not taken out and they're not doing the honest thing which is just telling you hey we took this 10% tip out just so you're aware <laughs> okay I have to make an amendment to my amendment really the most honest thing to do would be to allow you to tip whatever you wanted to whatever percentage you want on the total based on the service that you received and if they want to put a suggested tip that's fine but then obviously they would return all of your change because the point is you are deciding about the service that they gave you. So we always like pe to give people the benefit of the doubt, but in this case, I think it's kind of a scammy situation that you should definitely just pay attention to what the total is or even take a picture of the receipt so you know what type of change you should be getting back. But basically look on the receipt to see if it says servicio, prop, or propina, something or along those lines. a lot of times lines. it's propina sugerida, abbreviated as prop suger. Just pay attention to your receipt so that you know what type of thing is being taken out because that can add a lot to cost your trip if you're double tipping everywhere unknowingly. We had to come back to the room to cool off. My back is hurting a lot too, so I'm glad we brought our chirp wheel, chirp roller. It's like a back roller sort of thing, but better because it's got this groove for your spine and it targets the muscles that are just along your spine. So it gives a lot of relief, gets you some pops and some cracks and stretches your back out. I'll show you how it works. Let's see if I can get any pops here. Yep, and then you can just also like, uh, stretch out. Okay, I'm just gonna stay here forever, it feels so good. <laughs> uh, okay, but anyway, this thing is so perfect for when you travel. This is just one of the three that we have. They're, they get bigger in size, which targets different muscles and things. But a lot of people have asked us about these because we use them all the time, basically every single day, especially when we're traveling. So we set up a link that forwards to this product. It's thosebackrollers.com. Highly recommend if you have back pain, you just wanna improve your flexibility, those back rollers, that guy. <laughs> we are now walking around the town square and what I believe I see behind me is the most unique kiosco ever. It's like half of a globe painted on both sides. So you know what time it is. El, El Centro, Centro del Centro. Centro. <laughs> Doesn't right, look we... anything like your typical kiosco that no. you see in most Mexican towns. But this is awesome. What a unique town square thingy, my brother. What else shouldn't you do at Holbosch? Don't forget to bring pesos. Not a lot of places here accept cards. Almost every single business is cash only. And the few that do accept cards pretty much all charge a 5% fee on top of the bill in order to use a card. And that's even if it works at all, because like we said earlier, the power's often out or the cell towers are down here. So a lot of times they don't have the capacity to run a card. That leads us right into the next one, which is do not, whatever you do, don't pay in US dollars 
dollars, we have seen some seriously crappy exchange rates here on the island, like 16 pesos to the dollar, which you might be thinking, okay, like five or six pesos per dollar, not that much, but it adds up. Yeah, like if you're spending a week here on Isla Holbosch, it is not out of the question that you might be spending a thousand dollars. And if you're using their exchange rate and paying in dollars over the course of a week, you might be losing an extra 200 or 250 dollars versus paying in pesos. With an exchange rate like that, 16 pesos to the dollar, you would actually be better just pulling money out of the ATM, pulling pesos out of the mm -hmm. ATM, taking your bank's crappy exchange rate and whatever type of a hit, whatever type of a fee you'd be paying mm -hmm. to withdraw that currency than taking that 16 pesos to the dollar. <laughs> yeah, the the very best thing you can do is have a bank account like we have. We have Charles Schwab, which Aww. not only... <laughs> which not only charges no ATM fees worldwide, it also refunds all ATM fees. Uh -huh. So that's the best case scenario. You withdraw with a bank account like that and pay in pesos. Next best scenario is you use a card where you can here. But again, most places don't and most places uh, that do accept cards charge a 5% fee or so. So even that's going to be a better option than paying in dollars or withdrawing pesos from your own bank account here. And this actually leads us into the next one, which is don't bank on Holbosch being just as uh, Mexico prices as other places in Mexico, mm -hmm. like Oaxaca City, Morelia, Guadalajara, um, especially central Mexico places. Yeah, if you've been watching our videos, which if you haven't, please subscribe and go <laughs> watch them all. <laughs> but if you've been watching our videos across Mexico, you'll see that some of the prices around Mexico, or a lot of them, are very, very good, very attractive if you're coming from the U.S. Like maybe a half or a third of the price that you would pay in the U.S. and Canada? Yeah, but coming to Holbosch here, it's about the same prices as Cancun or Playa del Carmen. If not or, more. Or something like that, yeah. <laughs> something else you should not do here is use dollar ATMs. Walking around town, I've noticed that most of the ATMs dispense U.S. dollars, and it will say that. It will say U.S. dollars or dollars on the front of it. Look for one that gives you pesos if you're going to use an ATM. The next thing you should not do is plan on renting a car to get around the island. The only vehicles that are on the island, the only cars and trucks and things are for necessary purposes like Telmex and for internet and deliveries and things like that. Instead, you can rent a golf cart by the hour with, for a couple hours for the day. You can rent bicycles. You can hail a golf cart taxi or you can walk everywhere. Although that does lead me into another one not to do, which is walk everywhere. <laughs> the island is small, so even from our hotel, which is located in a very good location, we could pretty much get to most main places on the island in about 30 minutes walking. But because of the heat, because of the humidity, and because of these type of roads, you're gonna get blisters all over your feet, you're going to get to your destination in an absolute puddle, and you're gonna be exhausted, and you probably won't be able to do as many things as you want to do during the day. So we recommend to get one of these golf cart taxis. They'll be about 50 to 70 pesos to most destinations on the island. Another thing you should not do is take the advice of people who say that you can come to the island and enjoy it in just one to three nights. We respectfully disagree after coming here because this is a place to relax, to mm -hmm. unplug from technology and stuff, not to be going from place to place to place to place to place to do all the things that you would want to do like mm -hmm. bioluminescence and sunsets and three island roof, maybe whale sharks, things like that. Yeah, before coming to Holbosch, this is advice that we got a lot that two or three days is enough to see the whole island. And, and maybe that's true, but this is a place for relaxation and enjoying this beautiful beach that you have here. To slow down. Mm -hmm. And I think in one to three days, you, would, you wouldn't leave yourself any buffer time to like lay in a hammock or like sit on the beach, sit in a you know lounge chair on the beach or something like that. You would basically have to plan every second if you wanted to like maximize the trip or mm -hmm is soak in everything that the island has to offer. The next piece of advice we have for you is don't overpay for a tour. We're just talking about these tours like whale sharks or the three islands or a bioluminescence tour because this is a tourist destination and it's very likely to happen. So what we suggest is asking your Airbnb hosts or some locals what the price should be for the tour that you want to take. Mm -hmm. That way you're armed with that knowledge when you go up there and you're not going to accept a price that's double what you should be paying. Like for example, at the the hotel we're staying at. We asked someone and they said for the Three Islands tour, 
500 pesos is a gringo price, 250 pesos is a really good price, you probably shouldn't pay more than 300. So when you go up to one of these people and you uh, ask how much the tour is, inevitably they're probably going to say something like 500 pesos. You don't even have to negotiate. You just walk away. Just say no thank you and walk away. And then... Inevitably. <laughs> surpri surprise, surprise, they'll negotiate against themselves and drop the price down closer to what it's supposed to be. If you guys want to see more videos from this area, from the Riviera Maya and nearby places, we're going to link that playlist on the end screen here in just a moment. And if you want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button. But one more thing before you go. <laughs> that bell so you'll be notified the next time we release a new video and we'll see you soon